I've dedicated my career in medicine to helping to evaluate and treat and study patients with the syndrome that's called aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease or AERD. And the syndrome is classically diagnosed and evaluated to have three key components. The first of those is asthma. And that asthma is almost always adult in onset. So most of our patients develop asthma as an adult, although some of our patients actually had developed asthma as a child as well. And the second component of that triad are nasal polyps. And those are growths within the, the nose and the sinuses. And those are almost universally severe in these patients. The third component of the triad, which is in some ways the hardest to diagnose and can be the most mysterious, is relatively stereotyped respiratory reactions to medications like aspirin or in the class of NSAIDs, of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Within about an hour or so of taking them, the patients will develop respiratory reactions that almost always include some kind of nasal or sinus symptom, increased congestion, runny nose. And then in about half of the patients, they also develop an actual asthma attack, coughing, wheezing, and a drop in lung function as well. We had known since maybe the mid 1980s patients with AERD overproduce this chemical called leukotriene or leukotrienes. And those are chemicals that are sort of similar to things like histamine that we've heard of before. They can make you itch and flush and wheeze, maybe cause rash, but no one really knew why these patients overproduce them. But we've made some real progress to understand which kinds of cells produce them and why. Is that we think that activated platelets actually have a role in that, which is entirely new. And we think that this immune cell called the mast cell probably has a very large role in the disease. Is we've also learned a fair amount about the clinical disease. So for example, we did not know as a field that between 70 and 80% of all patients with AERD develop respiratory reactions when they drink alcohol. We didn't know that because we never asked. And as soon as three patients in a row sort of curiously asked me if there was anything strange going on with alcohol, and I had never heard of it, we started asking more and more patients and really have found worldwide that this is in fact a problem. The disease kind of is what it is. It doesn't turn into something else more frightening later on. So for example, the nasal polyps in the nose don't become cancerous polyps the way other kinds of polyps elsewhere in the body can. But most of our patients actually come to us for aspirin desensitization in order that they can then start what we call high-dose aspirin therapy. And the reason we do that is because, although we haven't figured out the complexities of why, it turns out that four aspirin a day has about a 70% chance of preventing their nasal polyps from growing. So back. there are two trials I'm aware of in the United States right now that are specific to only patients who have AERD. So the main trial that we have ongoing right now that doesn't involve a new medication is one where we're trying to understand more about the process of aspirin desensitization and help to figure out why high-dose aspirin therapy works for some patients, but not for all patients. Another um, ongoing trial is actually a trial of a new medication that's called Fethroban, and that's a medication that helps to block the activation of platelets to see if that's a medication that can be used either to treat uh, AERD on its own or perhaps to decrease the severity of the reactions to aspirin to make the aspirin desensitizations safer and a little bit easier for patients. But there are other ongoing trials for which patients with AERD would be welcome to participate. For the first time in about 10 years, we finally have on the horizon medications that are being newly developed for severe asthma and for severe nasal polyps, and there are ongoing um, recruitment trials to try to help understand which medications work best. We at the Brigham Women's Hospital ARD Center started an ARD registry about five years ago, and the aerd.partners.org website is available internationally, and patients can themselves register to be part of that registry. This allows us to really ask you know, a thousand people the same question and understand truly how frequent certain symptoms arrive, how well certain treatments work for each patient. Um, and it also allows patients to communicate back and forth with us and stay up to date with information about the disease and the field. And by educating our patients, we allow them the real full understanding of their own healthcare and give them the opportunity to participate or not. And so every time a patient wonders to themselves, I wonder if this is the best treatment for me or if there's something else that could be out there that's better. That's the time that the patient gets to look for participation in trials. Physicians assume that patients don't want to participate in trials or that it would be a big burden on the patient. In fact, large groups of data show that patient participation in trials is overwhelmingly a positive experience for them. And they very, very sincerely 
understand that they are participating in a larger way on bettering the disease process and treatments for everyone else with the disease, perhaps themselves eventually as well. But really, it is an altruistic gift that they're giving back.